Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Eli from Checkit.com here with a Cinema 4D tutorial on Waba Fett, Wubby, Wonderful. I don't know what you guys want to want me to really call it, but whatever it is, Wednesday. And uh, let me just address something right now because everyone keeps asking. I did not kill Brandon. He's still alive. He's uh, actually in the other room right now. Uh, we're still roommates and we're still best friends and brothers and everything like that. Uh, but he's preparing to go on a mission, so if you didn't get the memo already, um, it's not that he hates you guys or anything, but he's preparing to go on a mission, and he won't be with technology for two years, so, yeah, he's preparing, so don't hate him, don't hate me, if you want to unsubscribe, we completely understand, I still love you, I hope you guys want to be my friend, but if you want to unsubscribe, that's cool. But anyway, this is the first Cinema 4D tutorial, I love Cinema 4D, um, I mean, I, I've actually used it a lot in the past. But uh, I never made a tutorial about it, so uh, this is what we're creating today. This really simple 3D room that uh, has these nice panels on the top and sides and everything like that. Looks awesome. So I'll be providing two project files for this, the one we're creating today and this Lightroom that you see right here. So uh, go to ch checkit.com and download it if you want it. Also, don't forget to leave a comment because I put all my favorite comments at the end of the video. And uh, give the video a like because it helps out a lot. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't make a tutorial, you know, earlier in the week, guys, or this weekend. It was just very hectic, you know. Um, family comes in. It's It was Thanksgiving, so I'm very sorry, guys, but I'm back on track. So let's get to the tutorial. Let's do this thing. Am I right? Am I right, player? <laughs> I just didn't get the round through it, okay? Wait, what is that? What is? Oh, yeah, that's Nacho Libre. That's an awesome movie. Anyway, I get distracted so easy. So... Uh, this is the Cinema 4D project window. If you guys aren't familiar with it, the best thing to do with this program is just to dive in, alright? So I'm going to go slow and I'm going to teach you guys everything that I... Well, not everything I know in this tutorial, but I'm going to just, you know, teach you how to make this basic room and you guys will get a lot of the techniques you need to learn this program right now. So, let's start by just clicking on this square up here and going down to a cube. We're just going to create a nice cube right here. And uh, here's the size down here. Let's just add a zero make it 2000 actually let's not make it that big that's what she said <laughs> let's just make it like 800 uh size y let's make it like uh, 550 and size z hmm how about just just 1000 all right so i'm going to teach you guys some shortcuts right here if you use the scroll wheel you can you know zoom out and then you will have these buttons right here this is how you navigate in cinema 40 these three buttons up here you see that but it gets very tedious if you just want to, if you're working and you want to just go up to here. So here's the shortcuts. The first one I'm going to show you is clicking and holding Alt, and you can spin around. You see that? It's nice. But now these three buttons are actually this one's one, this one's two, and this one's three, and that's just on your keyboard. So if you click and hold one, you see that? You can uh, it does the same exact thing as if you were up here. Now with two, I'm going to click and hold it. Does the same exact thing as if you were doing this, but with this one, oh, it's wherever you click, it zooms in to that area, which is kind of handy. So that's cool. And then number three is actually right here. See this? The orbit tool. Isn't that nifty? So cool. All right. Also Alt. But anyway, I uh, just I just want to show you guys that. So now we can actually get to creating the room. So you may be wondering why I created this box. We're gonna create that room inside of this box so let's click this button over here this box with this uh, little square on the top that just uh, let, well I'll show you so there's this button up here now you can either click this button or you can hit C to make it go faster and now the entire box is editable so I'm gonna click this front face I'm gonna hit delete and now if we use the alt key we can look inside there just kinda you know get a get a simple head on right there okay so Here's what we're going to want to do. We're going to select the cube. We're going to right click over here. We're going to go down to extrude. And we actually want to click apply first. And then now we'll get a real time projection of what we want. So what we want to do is actually make it so these, like it just extrudes it a little bit. So negative 18 looks fine. Maybe a little more up. There we go. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to select this left side gonna right click on it and we're gonna go down to bevel and now actually oh my bad sorry 
not bad. <laughs> I'm an idiot. What the heck? Select cube. Select this area over here. Right click. Go down to extrude inner. All right. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to do apply again. And now we're going to go up until we get something right around this area. I'm just going to make it easy and just go to 50. All right. Then we're going to select it again. Then right click and go down to extrude. Click apply. And now we're going to go into the positives to push it back. And this just creates a nice kind of, uh, you know, implanted light into the wall. It looks kind of cool. So now we're going to do the same exact process over here. Let's try to do it a little bit faster now. So right click, extrude inner. The, the settings are already there. So hit apply. See, it kept those old settings. Right click again. Go down to extrude. Apply kept those old settings and now we have two really nice imprinted so now let's uh use alt and go down select the top and we're going to do the same exact process right click extrude inner apply make it how you want it that looks fine to me right click extrude apply and now just put it where you want it that looks just fine to me Awesome, and we're gonna leave the bottom two just like that. So now let's uh, apply the lights to these layers. So let's make this as easy and fast as possible. Let's double click in this bottom area. Let's just create a new material. Double click on that material, and we're gonna unclick color and go to luminance instead. And we're just gonna make this into a light. This is kind of cool. So go down to the texture. We're gonna click this little arrow right here. Go down to gradient. Now click on the gradient. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on this little black box right here and invert it. Then we're going to go to type. And we're going to go down to circular. And now we can double click on this little dot right there on the white dot. And we're going to make it whatever color we want. But I'm going to stick with the colors I used before, you know, kind of a bright blue. Okay, now I'm going to click off of it. And now I'm going to go control or command. C to copy, control or command V to paste, and then do it again, command or control V to paste again. And that just made three copies. And why I made three copies is because I'm going to make all three of these different colors. So let's start with the first one. We already did that. So click on this face over here, or whichever one you want to be blue. Click and drag it over onto that area. You have to select it first, remember that. So now let's go to this and edit this one. Click on it double click and let's make this one that orange color bright orange okay cool click oh wait first select I almost broke my own rule right there goodness some teacher I am right I'm not a teacher but I'm not a rapper <laughs> that's such an odd he, he went crazy anyway uh, I, I always get so distracted I'm gonna stop talking all right so <laughs> do the same thing here but I'm gonna make this one white and I'm actually going to bring up you know, if we go to basic or sorry, let's exit out of it. And you see the brightness down here? Let's actually raise the brightness up to like 150 on this one. Because this is the upper soft box. It's actually kind of dark. So let's click on this face again. Boom. And click and drop. Awesome. Looks awesome already. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And now what we want to do is create another... I'm just kind of centering this up a little bit. Awesome. So we're going to create another... Uh, material but this is for the future material let's click on here all we're gonna do for this one is we're gonna keep the color right there I'm gonna go to the reflection click it and I'm gonna go to the texture I'm gonna go down to Fresnel and I'm actually just going to drop down the mix and also drop down the brightness so it's not so crazy yeah right around there looks cool awesome so now we're ready to add an object in and for this, let's just make it a nice circle. So I'm going to go to this square. I'm going to go down to sphere. And now let's uh, size it up a little bit. Also put up the segment so it's more of a perfect circle. Awesome. Now drop it down. Let's actually make sure that we are like perfectly on there. Uh, right about there should be good. All right. Now we can, you know, kind of go up a little bit, center it up, just just a tidbit. All right, <laughs> I'm too I'm too much of a perfectionist. All right, so we already made this material, so we can click on the material, 
drag and drop it onto the sphere. And now what we want to do is we want to make the entire cube, like the everything except for these luminance palettes, a different color. So I'm going to double click down here, I'm going to go to the material, and let's just make it a nice flat white material. That's fine with me. Alright, so if we click and drag and drop it onto the cube, what you notice is it changed everything. So we have to drag and drop it all the way to the beginning of all the materials and then it just applies it to the walls. So now what we have is, if I just do a quick little render, what we have is just this nice basic picture. It looks awesome, right? But now we need to make sure that it looks good. We need to add some uh, render settings. So go up to this button right here to edit the render settings. Start with the output and uh, normally to check it goes to 1080p so we're gonna go to 1080. Alright so now we're gonna right click go down to ambient occlusion then I'm gonna go right click again and go down to global illumination and now what we want to do is we want to change the primary method to irradiance cache legacy all right, and then the secondary method we want irradiance cache and diffusion depth. I'm just I'm just gonna put that up. If you don't have a good computer, you definitely don't want it up that high. And if you're working with video too, you do not want to have it up that high. You actually want different render settings completely. So I'll teach you guys that in the future. But right now we're just working with an image. So I'm gonna turn the gamma up. I'm gonna change the samples to high, and now watch what happens to this picture when I click this pre-render button it might take just a, a little bit but when it's done you will be happy and then we can make a little edits as well to the materials and see just you know how we like everything let's see it it's actually looking pretty good uh, the spheres material I don't really like it so I'm actually gonna drop that down Uh, yeah, less shiny. And also, maybe this, uh... Let's actually make this more of like a gray instead of just black. Not that I have anything against black. I'm actually part black. And, oh, I, I, okay, anyway. <laughs> I'm actually gonna skip this right here. I'm just gonna let it render. Alright, so that's actually looking pretty awesome. So last thing we want to do is we want to create a new camera and we can do that by clicking right here and holding and going down to camera. And now uh, what you'll notice is if you zoom out, you'll have your camera right here. So we actually want to go into that view. So click this little target button right here. And now we can edit the camera's view. So let's zoom out. And uh, a little tip here, if you remember those uh, those shortcuts I was showing you before if you hit one and you right click you'll change the or is it two? Oh, sorry it's two you'll change the so click and hold two, and click and hold the right click button and you'll change the, the focal length right here so that's what I'm doing I just want to get more of the entire shot or more of the entire room into the shot so that's why I did that awesome maybe lower just trying to center it up by eye so I don't like taking forever on tutorials you can always uh, be perfectionist if you guys want and with that now I'm gonna click it click the pre-render I'm gonna let it pre-render All right, that looks good to me. So this uh, this tutorial is now done, but I don't like how this is looking. I really don't. It's like I don't know why it's so dark and it's driving me crazy. Why is it so dark? I'll make this even lighter then. Stupid. Still looks gray. Why is it gray? Oh, that must be why. Oh, there we go. Goodness gracious. All right, I'm going to render it again. All right, so I actually really like how this turned out now. So I think it's ready to render. Okay, so go up to this middle button now, the only one we haven't clicked. Goodness gracious. 
All right, so it'll start rendering it, and it's cool because you can, uh, you know, take a look at everything. You, you could zoom in on all the little pixels if you really want to, but I'm going to zoom back out. And uh, <clears throat> after it's done, goodness gracious, taking forever makes my computer look slow. My computer does not suck, all right? I promise it doesn't. But <laughs> all right, so now that it's nearing up the end, what we can do is... Hey, Tiggo Biddies for the fans, yo. What we want to do is, we want to go up to this Save As button when it's done. And it is now done. Yes, it is. And what we can do is we want to click on this little, this floppy disk. We want to make sure it's on JPEG. Go to Options. Make sure it's at 100%. Okay. And uh, everything else I like to leave just normal. Hit OK. And now it's going to ask you where you want to save it. And I'm going to save it to the, uh, the desktop, of course. I'm just going to call it Tiggo Biddies for the fans, yo. Because I know that's what you guys want to call it. All right. That's what I call the project, too. So save. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, no, no, no. For the fans. Duh. For the subscribers. Dough. Now hit save. Okay. And uh, there we go. It now should be on the desktop, and there it is. So, uh, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. This was the first Cinema 4D tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't just go step by step with all the basics, but I, in my experiences, it's always best to just jump into a new program instead of like going the basics. You guys want to learn how to actually do stuff. I know you guys. All right, you guys have been our fans for a long time. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys this Friday, and I can't wait to release the tutorial. Like, I wanted to release it last Friday, but I didn't get the round to it. Seriously, I love Nacho Libre, but anyway, uh, I will see you guys on Friday, and don't forget to leave a comment and like the video, and I love you, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. <laughs>